Welcome, everybody. We got another uh, podcast going down today. I got my good friend Davey Brown from Fish Lab Tackle and Okuma Fishing. Uh, we're going to be talking post iCast, uh, what we saw uh, kind of from their perspective. Uh, the last one you heard was Steve and I kind of talking about us walking around and stuff. So we're going to talk about Okuma and Fish Lab. And we are going to talk specifically about some wake baits that they came out with because we just got done uh filming and producing some wake bait videos and for me it was kind of a new experience we're going to talk about that and uh huge success that we had out fishing small mouth and large mouth so enjoy this week's episode wild fish wild places behind the scenes what's up buddy what's happening dennis thanks for having me <laughs> yeah for sure um we i think we both had a really good eye cast huh you guys had it was good. it was nuts you know coming off of a crazy year no show last year we didn't know what to expect uh, we downsized our booth as you walked around you saw that the entire show was downsized uh you know i they, they're saying it was maybe 30 percent less i'd venture to guess probably over 50 percent less that whole other side of the wing there when you're walking down into that big left that big corridor that whole section was gone which is where most of the major manufacturers were it was just all empty I'd say, yeah, less than 50% floor show, but the foot traffic was incredible at the show. People were excited to get back out and see stuff in person. It, it was great. Yeah, that's what Steve and I kept talking about. It was down, like, for sure. I mean, how much, we don't know, but I would say 30 to 50. With that. I mean, like, we were talking Rapala. Nor Normark wasn't there. We didn't see Sims there. Um, you know, a lot of the – Under Armour. I mean, yeah, a lot of, yeah. A lot of majors weren't there. Yeah, Under Armour wasn't there. I didn't notice that one. Uh, no, no, obviously, no Canadians were there. Uh, yep. They couldn't get here. But with that being said, the business seemed way better to me. I mean, people were doing deals. And I don't know if it's because of the less only people that were there were serious. And so there was a, just a ton of good business that got done. Yeah, you, uh, you know, you definitely were able to hold somebody's attention a little bit longer. They didn't feel like they were getting pulled away to other booths or meetings. You know, on, on our marketing side, it was, uh, it was a full schedule all three days. Uh, Friday was a little lighter just because Friday is always lighter. But, uh, you know, we had, like you mentioned, the Canadians were not there. You know, that's all of our Canadian retailers, sale, all these big chains up up north there just weren't there. Uh, you know, automatically without the Canadians there, the the meanness level of the show comes up because all the Canadians, all the niceness doesn't uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's average the it back out. Uh, but uh, you know, it was it was a great show. I mean, on all three of our brands, just the foot traffic, the excitement. Uh, of course, we had our booth right next to the new product showcase. We were right next to one of the entrances, so we had a great steady flow the entire time. It, it was cool. It was cool. And your your booth was definitely one of the best ones in the whole in the entire program there it looked great the all the fish lab stuff the colors the, the lights all the banners and everything looked spectacular and yeah you were the you guys happened to be at the entrance that i came in the first day first booth first people i'm like oh hey what's up <laughs> yeah you know it, it, oddly you know we like i said we downsize normally we've got about a, a hundred foot by 80 foot booth it's really large this year we went 30 by 50. We didn't do our big hanging sign, so we figured it was going to be a little more difficult to to find us. Um, but when those doors opened, we had no idea that that was the entrance. And all of a sudden, it's just a giant flow of folks coming through. It was uh, surprising, but awesome. <laughs> yeah, very awesome. And that uh, that is another thing that I noticed that we didn't really talk about on the last one is the size of booths. That was definitely a thing. I think everybody. Um, I mean, I'm sure there were some that were the same, but for the most part, everybody was was uh downsized significantly or at least a little bit i think there's a lot of factors to that you know we actually downsized and people were coming in and they're going man is your boot smaller and we're like no it's just the you know the covid 30 that everybody's gained it just feels tighter <laughs> right uh but you know the, the some of the reasons that it got uh you know everybody downsized was the the lack of samples lack of product you know on the okuma side we just didn't have any of the new product to even show and i told the story a whole bunch of times that our our new product came overseas and it was it landed in Orlando about a week before the show and it was stuck in customs it wasn't getting released uh just a big backflow of of on the custom side of stuff coming from overseas and it was just stuck so like a new product showcase luckily we hand carried a couple pieces so we were able to get some stuff in but within the booth we didn't have any of the new reels to show it was uh you know, and, and that's why that's why Normark and Rappel have pulled out too was not only and it's a couple of the other big players too is they just didn't have samples they don't have inventory right now uh, there's such a backlog of product 
coming from everywhere that it's, uh, you know, a lot of people just figured there's really no reason the business is done at this point. I've already kind of talked to all my major players. There's uh, just really no reason to go. Yeah. And, and, you know, that was a struggle with everybody, all the manufacturers this year, after last year, you know, this year, our, our world has exploded last year. You know, everybody's in the same boat. We sold, you know, everybody sold everything backlog, you know, the whole deal. And then to spend a hundred, you know, $150,000 or whatever it is to come to ICAST, like, what's the point? You know, it's like, we'll just be there next year. And, you know, you and I had this running joke of, what, what product are we going to take to the show? Let's just take a bunch of old stuff and show how durable it is. <laughs> so, you know, that, you know, that's a funny thing about the bringing the old stuff and how durable it is, but like, we didn't have a show last year. So I didn't have a set of last year samples. So all of the new product we introduced in 2020, which would have been the 2020 ICAST, which was a virtual event after all, we didn't have any of those samples. There was no shows last year. So I didn't have all the new Serrano rods and all the stuff we introduced last year no samples. We don't have any inventory of it either. So it was a struggle to pull last year's and, you know, we don't have any of this year's, but last year's and try to get this year's stuff. So it was like looking at a year's previous. It's like, Hey, look at this fin chaser that was uh, introduced, you know, 12 years ago. It's really cool. <laughs> it's neat, isn't it? And we, and we don't have stock of that either. So <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, talking about stock. I mean, stock is stock is crazy for all of the brands and for uh, all the manufacturers out there. We're, I'm actually headed to the office as soon as we're done here. We're unloading some containers. We're, uh, you know, we're still a little bit short staff, but we happen to have six containers of goods arriving this week. And, uh, you know, they're pulling all of us management staff in there to help do that. Uh, six containers is a lot where we might have three containers a month. We're having six this week alone. So hopefully we're getting a little bit caught up on some back quarters. We're going to, there's a few new rods, some of the new introductions that are actually coming in a little bit early, which is great. But, you know, not only, not only uh, is it a lack of stock, it's uh, the production times have run out. We're running about an eight month lead time from our own factories right now. Yeah. And which is You guys own your own factory, which is it's our, it's our own factories. <laughs> Normally it's a 90 day lead time from production to the time we get into our factory, 90 to 120 days. Uh, you know, we're running eight months right now. So if I order some rods right now, it's going to be August 1st coming up. We're not looking until March or April by the time those arrive to our warehouse. And that's just because it's hard to get components, you know, Fuji and all these different companies that we use, Sea Guide, they can't get the components. You know, it's, it's, it's not that we build every little component within our factories. You know, we're waiting for components, all the guides, the inserts, we're waiting for real seeds on the, we're waiting for hooks on some of the baits. You're waiting for specific things. Then you can put it together. Then you ship it in a regular shipping windows, three to four weeks coming from overseas. And right now the port delays are even on top of that. So you're talking about another month of just sitting out in front of Long Beach here, just waiting to get off of a boat. It's crazy. It is crazy. And then on top of that, because of the big delay in the ports, um, they're out of containers in, in, you know, coming from overseas. They're it's, uh, so yeah, it's, I was born and raised down here in Long Beach. And, uh, you know, we go by the port quite a bit. I was just down there a couple of weeks ago and the stack of empty containers is like six high as far as you can see. If any of your watchers are Call of Duty players, it looks like you're at the port of Verdanzig. It's uh, it looks exactly like the video game right now. There's containers everywhere. It's <laughs> it's not, and they're all empty, which is which is nuts. That is crazy, man. Nobody's it's, shipping back just empty containers. There's no no money in that. Ah, that's nuts. And well, it's it's and I think it's nice to you know for the people out there listening and watching this on YouTube to get an understanding. Um, you know we've been hearing it. I know you guys have been hearing it a lot. I've been hearing it on, on different ends. It's like, when am I going to be able to get these, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever it is, when can I get these? And people are getting aggravated and, you know, they just want to go fish. They want this product. And it's like, man, it's just, it's, it's just a real struggle right now. And it's a real, it's a real thing. It's not because we forgot to place an order or, you know, it's because we don't want to sell it. It's just because. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, I think people are starting to realize that it's 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 kind of our reality right now, and it's not just Okuma or Fish Lab or Soft Steel or, you know, it's it's everybody Shimano, right. Daiwa, Abu. Everybody's in the exact same boat. But we're getting you know I'm getting threatening emails. We're getting threatening messages on the Instagram and the Facebook pages about oh I'm going to take my business elsewhere. And you know at some point you're just like okay, you know I I understand your frustration, uh, but everybody right now is in the same boat. You know if you want to take your business somewhere else, they don't have it either. Right. It's uh, and it's think tough. about you know your frustration as an angler as a consumer. Think about what our frustration is. 
our frustration is not only do we not get to fish it like the consumer, but we don't get to sell it. We don't get to make money that pays for what we do to pay for our salary, our rep groups, all of our distributors are pissed off at us. I mean, whatever frustration the anglers feeling that multiply that by about 10 and that's where we're at, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. And the anglers at the end of the line, right. Yeah, right. So to speak, and, the, and no pun intended there on the fishing yeah. side, but <laughs> that was a good pun it, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's the manufacturer. Then it's us. It's the actual manufacturing. Then it's yeah. us as the manufacturer, the distributor, then it goes to the distributor, which then goes to the retailer, which then goes down to the consumer. Right. And it just, you know, snowball runs downhill there. So this gets and bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger as it gets downhill. And you, you yep. guys have, uh, you guys basically shut off both okuma and fish lab uh websites for sales what three months ago or so i'll actually all three of them we shut them off probably uh, this year was maybe the end of march early april uh we turned them back on now but uh, you know our goal at, at at all three of the brands is to is to support our retailers we want to make sure our retailers yeah. have the goods our distributors have the goods we don't want to compete with them although we do have retail aspect on the websites um, you know, that's more of a, a last resort. I go into my retailer. I can't find what I'm looking for. Let me check the website. It's always going to be at full price. Every once in a while, you'll find the, the super closeout deals that we just need to get stuff out of the warehouse. But our, our goal is to support those retailers to support our community of anglers out there. Right. Yep. No, but it's, it's back up now. So that's and, nice. And rolling. Yeah, that's good. And you're getting six containers. So you need help unloading those. What time? What time I tell you. Where? Be there. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, in our, in our office, we've got Jonathan and Gene going today. Uh, we got, uh, I think Doug's been in, Doug's the president of the company. He's getting in there. He's getting sweaty. He's pulling stuff out of these containers. And, uh, you know, it's, it's even with six containers, we'll probably have a couple things on the shelves afterwards, but most of this stuff is all pre-sold. You know, you, if you're going to your retail and you can't find it, they've got it on order and they're waiting for it. So we're taking it off the container. I'm putting it on pallets. And then as soon as it, as soon as it's palletized, man, that stuff is shipping out. So we get it. We ship it out as soon as possible. With six containers, and hopefully there's going to be some extra stuff. You know, we're talking like uh, someone was just asking me about cold water line counter reels. I know you fish those quite a bit. It's a lot, yeah. We're, we're, we're back ordered tens of thousands of these reels right now. And we'll get, a, we'll get a shipment, maybe a thousand reels. Sounds like a lot. It's just chipping away just a little bit at some back orders right now. It's it's a crazy time. That Everybody's is. fishing. It's great. It is. Everybody's fishing. And that's... Uh... That's something else we talked about on the last podcast is kind of what the industry message was uh, that was coming down the pipe to us was, you know, we have all these new anglers that are part of that, that showed up last year, right? Like, I think they said something like 11 million new licenses sold or somewhere in that ballpark. And so, um, you know, our focus as manufacturers and media needs to be, let's, uh, let's get some really basic stuff out there along with our technical talk but really basic stuff and keep those guys in there so we got all these people fishing a whole bunch of new people fishing and let's give them some information to help them be successful yeah what we did on our side is we we're seeing the influx of new anglers just like you mentioned uh you know in the middle of last year during this whole thing you couldn't go to disneyland you couldn't go to a park you couldn't go to the to the pier to do whatever you couldn't do so many things that a lot of people are just going outdoors. You know, you're up in an area where you have free access to all this, all this waterways and go do stuff down here in California. A little bit, you can go to the beach, you can throw your, throw your baits in the water, you can go to some of the local lakes. The lakes were closed, a lot of the launch ramps. But we saw all these new anglers all around the country. We're getting all these messages like, hey, how do I tie a, how do I tie a knot? What's the difference between a spinning reel and a casting reel? So one of the things we did on our side, and you've been part of it too, is something called Tune Up Tuesday. We, it's something we launched a year and a half ago at this point. Uh, it's on the Okuma website, Okuma Fishing USA. And it's Tune Up Tuesday. Every Tuesday, it's, a, it's just a brand new, new angler thing. It's, it's how to do something. How do I tie a dropper loop? What's the difference between a circle hook and a J hook? Very basic information, but it's information that a lot of anglers are craving. You know, it, it's, it's hard and you see it too. You work in the tackle industry. So a lot of times, especially down in Southern California here, if you walk into a tackle shop, you've got your hardcore anglers that are hanging out at the counter and they're, they're chatting with the guys behind the counter. It's a little intimidating sometimes. A new angler walks in, they don't want to ask a question with two rods and go, how do I know which one's spinning? And just, you know, and especially with the internet nowadays too, right? People are just going to flame you if you ask a weird question. Someone's going to light you up because they're hiding behind their keyboard. So we're trying to make it an, an easy access area where people can just ask these questions to us. We'll answer them. Um, in, a, in a friendly way, we're not going to make fun of a question. You know, no question is dumb. We all started anglers. 
you know, some of our guys in the office, they still do the upside down spinning wheel. And I think I've seen you do it. I don't know where you're on the screen here, but you know, so, so, you know, we're just trying to get these guys just some knowledge. If yeah. I want to walk into a tackle store and ask a question, I want to know what, what I'm actually asking about, you know, what is, what are the components of a spinning reel? What are the components of a fishing rod? Is it a fishing pole? Is it a fishing rod? You know, it depends on where we're at in the country, yeah. but you know, just some very basic information for anglers and they, they've been digging it. Yeah, I I love it too, man. The tune up Tuesday thing that you, you do, and you're so good. You're so good at in front of the camera and uh, explaining that stuff in detail. But just because you're a, a new angler and do you think these, you know, these kind of questions might be dumb? I mean, there's stuff I learn stuff all the time because it's not necessarily my world. Like I I know my world inside and out and technical, but a lot of the stuff that you do in Southern California, like especially the offshore stuff. I don't understand most of it. And like you said, it's kind of like the fly shop mentality, right? Like the uppity fly shop guys, nobody goes in there and wants to ask simple questions because they're afraid of being made fun of or whatever the case may be. And so this has been a good opportunity to tune up Tuesday. And I think I'm going to circle back on my YouTube page and just start doing a handful of super easy, you know, just very basic stuff that people may not know. Yeah, people are craving that information. You know, what are you what are you doing if you're going to go fish some new waters? A lot of people are sitting at their computer, they're they're googling, or YouTube. You know, they want to look at. Okay, I'm going to uh, to Lake X. You know, what 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 bait's working right now? How do I how do I fish that popping frog? How do I do different things? So you just try to give them some basic information. Like we're noticing on the analytics within our YouTube page that the how-to videos are performing so much better than you know just standard bait. It's usually myself or John standing there in front of the camera talking about a product which, you know, you, it's, you just, they kind of start to look the same, but when it's that information that you're actually feeding some folks, the analytics and the, and the views and everything just jump and people are eating that stuff up. It's great. Yep, exactly. I had a, I had a friend of mine reach out a couple of weeks ago and she just started fishing and wants to know how to do it. And it's very simple, you know, like the most simple stuff. Let's start with that. And then we're going to work from there. So I think that's uh, one of the messages that we all, received during the show and you guys have already known you've been on top of this stuff like you said you've been doing tune up tuesday for a year and a half already or so you so, go and get it one of those baits um fish lab came out with that one of the new things that um you know like i said like I, i'm not a huge bass fisherman i don't chase the large mouth and the small mouth as much as some people and one of those new baits for me was the was the new wake bait and i was introduced to it last year that the biogill wake bait because here locally the these big largemouth were eaten um they were keyed into the bluegill i mean they were smashing bluegill and those were doing the deal well then last couple weeks ago we started using the bio shad and painted them up i just took a sharpie and put lines on the sexy shad the uh the chartreuse blue back with the white put black sharpie lines down it to make it look like a perch man they just destroyed that thing so yeah these things i just, I just happen to have one look at that oh, these things yeah. are uh, these things are crazy so we introduced these last year's icast so everybody's this is the first year everybody really got to put their hands on them at the show but they're a crazy top water bait like you were talking about the top water bass fishing it's there's really nothing like that when you're when you're working this thing and you're working it slow and you're watching it swim along the surface and all of a sudden just a gigantic explosion that looks like something out of world war ii comes out of the water and blows up on this thing it's there's really nothing like that you're just like first you're shocked yeah and then you're like wait do i set the hook do i just grind down on it what what hold on here I, i'm i'm enjoying watching that fish blow up anyway so these things are just you know crazy crazy good there's the two sizes as you can see there so, you know, if you're, if you're keyed up in on some big fish, we do a lot of the big fish, big bait fishing down here in Southern California, or any of your smaller size baits are going to be, this is, this one's going to get a bit more. This one will usually produce bigger fish. This one will produce giant fish as well. But, uh, you know, a lot of guys down here, they want to throw the big bait. You're going to get a limited amount of bites, but they're usually going to be bigger fish. Although you'll catch a bass this big trying to eat this thing. Yeah. They're not the brightest fish. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That's what's that smaller size what size is that like three and a half that's inches or so four inch and a six inch those four are the two six. sizes there yeah four inch I, six inch you can i'm sorry go ahead oh that that four inch is what we fished exclusively but that six inch i cannot wait to run on pike 
Oh, totally. Yeah, Pike, Pike and Muskie are going to blow that thing up. I mean, they're, yeah. they're so well built, too. They're just a single jointed bait. It just makes that nice big S turn. You could pop it if you want, but it just makes that nice S turn as it's swimming through right along the surface. It kicks out that giant V wake that you can just keep an eye on. What's oh, cool it's... when that happens, when you got that big wake and all of a sudden you can see a wake coming from a different direction at your bait. Oh. Bam! Bam! Oh my God. I cannot tell you how and you will see it. So uh, you guys are watching this on YouTube or listening to this on the podcast. Just make sure you go look for that video because we're about to release um, a frog fishing video, a rattle toad that fish up came out with and two new wake baits, small mouth and large mouth. Um, and what it was interesting to me, we'll stick with the wake bait for a minute was how the different species reacted different to the, um, to what we were presenting. So a small mouth wake bait, I was reeling it across the top, you know, just like you said, getting it at a, like a medium pace, I would say a big wake coming off the back, hold my rod tip high. I mean, just keeping that thing swimming and those small mouth would crush it. Like they hit it so hard, but they would get underneath it. They wouldn't necessarily blow it up. Well, then we were on this point and we knew there was a bunch of smallmouth on this point and we ran across there a couple of times and get bit, threw it up there and actually brought it tight and then just sat there and went like this with the rod tip. And that thing was just doing this in the water. It was like double after double after we, both of us just get bit, getting bit. I mean, those smallmouth were coming up and putting their nose on it and it would just sit there and flutter and they would just smash that thing. And the largemouth, the next place we went, we, there was all largemouth. I was reeling that thing across the top of the water fairly fast, like faster than I would have expected to get hit. And the largemouth were actually coming out of the water. They would come from the side and hit it. They would blow up from the top. Like you said, a, you'd see a weight coming from a different direction. I mean, it was <laughs> awesome. They're, they're exciting. And of course, like you just mentioned, you can fish them so many different ways with that tight, fast grind. You get that real tight wiggle that's right on the surface and it still kicks off the big weight. Yeah. Do it real slow. You get that giant weight coming in, speed it up, you know, make it look like it's evading something as they're, you know, it'll, it'll nice widen it. It'll get tight and then go wide again. If you, yep. as you're speeding it up, slowing it down, pop that thing. And then just say it's something injured on the surface. It'll, it'll still wake, but then it'll just kind of flutter. And sometimes even do that and then just pause it. And it just because like a fish that's maybe stunned up there. And that's when they're just going to crush that thing. <laughs> yep. I, uh, so much fun. So much fun. Like I started, I, we, you and I had this conversation last year after I fished the wake baits for the first time. And I'm just like, these, these baits are so fun to fish and so effective. I mean, they're just having a ball with them. Uh, and you know, when those, when those large mouth attack that thing, like you said, either on a tight line or you stop it and pause it, it's there's nothing like it we got to see we actually got to see a wounded perch in the water and it was the exact same size as that four inch bait that we were running and like you know it'd been stunned by a bird or another fish yeah. or whatever but we pulled up on the bank and it was sitting there and it was doing just that right it was just sitting there like this just doing this and then it, it tried to swim it'd swim down and then it would just float back up and do this yep. on the surface and we're like all right, we're matching the hatch pretty much perfect. That's the hatch, exactly. <laughs> yeah, those uh, those wake baits are, are so much fun. And um, the uh, the next bait that we were fishing was a rattle toad. And that was purely largemouth fishing. And same thing, right? Like you guys, oh, there it is. <laughs> the, uh, the What size is that one? That's the, uh, that's the largest of them. That's that uh, three and a quarter inch. Yeah. And that's that's a big big toad right there. Yeah, it is. And the legs are too, the legs are almost as long as the body, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and you so, know, yeah, you were just. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were talking about the frogs. Yeah. So that so that rattle toad. I was fishing the next size down, which is what two and a quarter. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's two two and a quarter, and then that three. And the, so yeah. I think the two and a quarter, and then I was cutting the legs down to give them so they wouldn't short strike it from behind. Just cutting it back a little bit, and the what was happening where we were at you know typically you think of frog fishing as big weed mats you know like delta or whatever you, those yep. big large mouth are in there that's obviously why they even made them the, the, the hooks come up on the top they're completely weedless you just kind of bounce them across those mats stop them in an opening yeah there it is you see those hooks just sit 
Yeah, just sit right up in the plastic so they don't ever get hung up. But when a when a bass smashes it, obviously the the plastic goes down. Exactly. Goes yeah. down. They get it. Hooks exposed. Boom. Here, let go. me show you. Yeah, <laughs> get it in your lip. <laughs> well, what we yeah, had yeah. happening oh, was these these largemouth in the morning. Well, all day honestly, we're pushing up against this big rocky bank, <clears throat> and it was steep. So they were positioning themselves between the rocky bank and the weed bed that had grown out. And it may have only been, you know, six feet from the bank or even less, you know, depending on how deep it was. But there was this big weed line and a rocky bank and those fish were anywhere in between the two. So we just throw that frog or that rattle toad right on the bank, splash it off of there. You know, when you're to fishing top water, you throw it, you let the, you let the, the ripple go away and then you just bounce it across there and with that rattle toad you can either you can pop the tip and kind of get that lip bouncing and swinging like this you know up and down or you can walk the dog a little bit with it or you can just kind of slowly just kind of pop it and swim it across the top and then pause it again all of them were getting bit honestly and there was actually no weeds it was didn't even need to be weedless honestly but it was still just smashing smashing fish because they were into it People, people, yeah, exactly. So like I'm thinking like you're talking the steep bank stuff. A lot of people don't totally realize that those bass will stage up. Here's the drop. Here's your, here's your drop off into the water here. Those fish are, they're just kind of staging here waiting for stuff to fall off of these rocks and those frogs will slide off or they'll jump in the water because they want to go to the next little area there. And then those things are just coming up and attacking them. Yeah. Yep. And what's kind of, what's cool about these two too, is it's actually got, it's a floating PVC. So when it sits in the water, it does not sit like this, like a lot of the frogs do. This will actually sit up on the top, just like its legs. Yeah. And then every time you're, like you mentioned, just twitching that thing, the legs kind of, it'll give it that, like it's fluttered, like it's swimming. And then that stays up on the surface. It's pretty cool. And then the one, yeah. you were talking about the splashing, the bait you didn't get was that new, uh, the rattle toad, the popping toad. Yeah, I need that That's one. the popping rattle toad with that big old mouth. So here's the standard. And then that big old gap mouth there so every time you're popping that thing it shoots water like two feet ahead and that yeah. draws in some crazy strikes too same body same bite down it's got that i don't know if you guys can hear that but big old rattle in there it's uh they're crazy they're good yeah i can't wait to i haven't fished that one yet and i love you know when i was a kid that's all we fish for with top water with the poppers of some sort and yeah. you know those obviously those bubbles and that popping sound that makes them go crazy it's it's a good time you know that's that's that whole top water thing right so if you're if you if you're open water you know throw that wake bait at those bass they're staged you can same thing up against those rocks there they're staged up they're just waiting for anything to swim by usually i wouldn't throw this into the rocks i'd throw it a little bit parallel or maybe like at a 45 degree and just kind of work it along those rocks this dude man let it hit the rocks yeah. right get it up in there let it fall and let it splash like you mentioned and let it sit for a second and then kind of like it was stunned and then work it away and a lot of times as soon as that thing hits the water, they're just going to get crushed. Yeah, that's that's f uh, funny you say that because we had that happen with both baits numerous times. Like almost like they can see it coming. And and guys out there that are listening to this that have thrown even flies, you know, flies, any kind of top water. Sometimes those fish, either you're throwing it right at them and they can see it coming. You know, they just see the shadow. They'll actually hit that thing at almost instant as soon as it hits the water. Boom, and they blow up. And you're like, and half the time they miss it because it's you know there's no tension there or whatever but yeah it's, it's crazy, crazy. Yeah, exactly especially if you're on a non-wind day with no ripple on the surface those fish can see a great distance out right. that's why you see if you watch a lot of the the big bass the big bait bass fishermen videos you'll see them when they see a fish they'll, they'll crouch down on the boat right they get really really low and they start slowing down like real low like right on the water because if they're standing up they can see that silhouette and that bait's headed towards that big silhouette a lot of times that bass will come up on it and they'll they'll move off but you're down low enough and the fish doesn't you know give it not quite that opportunity to see you yeah same thing up on the rocks they see that bait coming down with with if it's flat calm they can see that bait coming from quite a ways a lot of times if they're away from the bank and you cast it towards the bank as it's headed towards the bank you can see those fish start darting towards it before it even hits the water <laughs> nuts. yeah that is nuts um you, you you made a point a really good point about going 45 with those things and um the first afternoon we were fishing the largemouth uh, with the wake baits, there was a wind blowing. And so we were kind of drifting with that wind down that bank. And that's how I was, I was throwing it at a 45. And so it was getting a lot more time in that strike zone along that weed bed instead of 
perfectly in and out. Like I like to work the frog and it was nuts. I mean, we probably caught, I probably caught 50 fish that afternoon on the wake bait. Awesome. I mean, it was nonstop. And the, the viciousness of the attacks on those wake baits is what makes it fun. And you, you mentioned like, just scream, like, Oh, I don't know what to do. Well, if, uh, if going back to the videos again, if you circle back and watch some of these videos on the fish lab side or on my side, um, you'll actually see me set the hook and you can tell that it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Exactly. A lot of times you're not expecting it. You might make a couple casts where there's no action. So you, you get a little bit more casual. You make that, you're talking to your buddy Yeah, and then, Oh, oh, something's happening. <laughs> oh, uh oh, what uh, what else you got from Fish Lab for that you think is an important thing to talk about? So unfortunately, I don't have any of the new samples here. Uh, you know, we shipped everything back. The the new product samples from MyCast actually made it to the booth, which was awesome. But it'll be back here on Friday. But one of the, the big excite oh two I'll give you two. So one of the big exciting baits on the bass side is called the Slamamander. It's a uh, it's a salamander style bait. Um, you know. Back when we all grew up bass fishing, the, the salamander or the water dog, depending on where you're at, was such a, a, a key, a live bait bait. You, you pin one of those dudes on, you let them out there, and it swims. But now they're actually illegal to use as a live bait. You know, they're oh, cute. Really? They've got little eyelashes, and they're, oh, you know, they're all friendly. So I'm sure someone got involved and said they're too cute to use as a bait. But they're, uh, you know, you, you, you can't use those anymore. But that like uh, I was talking to Mike Bennett about it. You know that that doesn't mean that the bass are not eating these things anymore. They're still right. out there all around the country. So you know we came up with this bait that almost perfectly mimics a water dog or a salamander. It's called the Slamamander, but uh, it's got it's got the big whiskers that kind of come out as the gill flare. As a, as you're whooping that thing, the, the the gills actually look like it's like it's breathing through. The little legs on the side they'll they'll twitch down when you're pulling it. So every time you move it, the little legs twitch and it goes back and forward and big tail. The, the unique part about it is there's lots of salamander baits out there, but this one at the end of the tail has actually got a big paddle. So it not only does the little flare when you're swimming it, it gets a little side to side roll and then it's got the big paddle tail at the bottom. So there's you know a bunch of secondary and, and triple movements on these things that if a bass isn't keyed in on the gill flare, it might, that little feet movement might do it or that big paddle tail. It, it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I, I can't wait to see it. I didn't see it at ICAST. Oh, they're, they're crazy. And, and so let's talk about the salamander deal. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not a huge bass guy. So, but I remember when, when we were kids, I remember reading about it and, and a few different things. So it was a big deal, huh? The salamander. It was a big deal. I mean, it was, it was, cause you can go get them. You can readily get them. You know, the other big live bait that everybody still uses is like crawdads. Right. You know, bass are keyed in on those same thing, fishing those rocks, you tie on a, a live crawdad, you can toss that thing out there, any kind yeah. of rocky bottom area and those bass go crazy. The salamanders, you used to be able to go get, you know, you could at your local bait store, you can get a bucket of them. They raise them and everything else. But, oh, gotcha. You could buy them at the bait shop. Exactly. You can go catch them. You know, you could do your bait traps and catch them, but you can buy them at the bait shop, like buying night crawlers. You know, you buy your live baits that way, um, but you can't anymore. So I, oh. I don't know what changed. And I don't know if they were calling it maybe like an invasive species thing when all that kind of stuff was going on. Gotcha. You know, you're bringing something that's not native to a lake to a different lake and then they reproduce and, you know, could wreak havoc on that particular lake. Right. That makes um, sense. Okay. But, you know, bass are still eating those things. It's not like they forgot because they're outlawed, right? There's, things are still out there and bass so are still you, keyed in on them. So, so you guys figured, well, why not just make one that looks exactly like a live salamander, but make it out of plastic, obviously. <laughs> exactly. This is, this is something Mike Bennett, who's the product manager for Fish Lab, something he's been wanting to do for a long time. You know, this one particular bait's been in the works for almost three years. And they finally got it dialed in. We wanted to release it last year. We went back, did a couple tweaks to it. So Sweet. it's pretty cool. You know, the other big news real quick, I'll, I'll do one more bait after this. But the one big news at Fish Lab at the boot this year was that we added Bill Simentel. He is the creator of uh, BBZ baits, so like the BBZ rats and the BBZ, the fat fly and all these different baits. We actually, he's with us now and he's uh, one of the product development guys. So he's going to help Mike. They're going to develop all these baits and stuff. Sorry. What's his name again? Bill Simentel. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I looked him up after we talked. I mean, the guy's a stud. He's been designing baits from scratch. He's got patents of his own. Uh, he's got designs of his own. The guy is really a... Uh, a lure geek, if you will, right? Like he makes this stuff and I'd love to talk to him one day. He's a, he's a mad scientist guy. You know, he's the one that'll sit in his, uh, he'll sit in his house in his garage and he'll, he'll whittle away and he's got a sketch pad full of just 
then you wake up in the middle of the night with this crazy idea in your head you sketch it down wake up in the morning and like what the heck was i thinking here and then it's like oh, hey I, there might be something to that <laughs> you know which you know speak so speaking of that and you know bill's an awesome dude but the other bait i wanted to talk about was the the new bio flyer did you check that thing out by chance at fish lab so what, you know that what? Was, this was a I saw it. I didn't know what it was because every, everybody was busy at that moment when I saw him sitting there. So I didn't ask, but I think I know which one you're talking about. I mean, they got, this it's is, got wings on it, right? Exactly. Exactly. So this is, you know, down in Southern California right now, you've got a legitimate shot at a 200 pound bluefin tuna. Anytime you hit the water a couple of weeks ago, they were two miles off the beach. Now they're near Catalina. So, you know, it's still not far. They're in everybody's reach, but these things are keyed in on flying fish. These big fish are keyed in on flying fish. And right now, if you want to just go buy like a frozen flying fish, it's about 40 bucks a piece for one frozen flying fish. So oh one of the things God. that, yeah, it's nuts. And you can't, you can't, you used to be able to net them. Now, if you want to catch flying fish, you have to do it on a sabiki rig. They're very difficult to catch. It's not like you're just jigging up mackerel like normal where you can get hundreds of mackerel a day. So this is one of the ones that, one of the crazy mad scientist things was Mike was like, man, you know, what, what do we need to do to get like a flying to get a flying fish there's the yummy flyers you've seen some of the rubber flying fish out there you know rigs you're talking about 150 bucks you're tying this thing to the kite um so what what fish lab came up with and what mike was working on was this thing called bio flyer what it is it's actually a wingsuit it's a it's a thing that like, you've got your you've got your bait so now all you have to do is go jig up your mackerel you're not using a fake bait but you're, you're going to go jig up some live mackerel you're using a sabiki rig you catch a mackerel you know big foot long mackerel you put this little clip on the back and it's got the wings to it so it looks just like a flying fish you look at the back of it it's got wings on it you're going to pin that thing to your kite and it's just going to bounce along the surface what these guys are doing for the bluefin is you're actually fishing a kite with a big balloon on it so big kite way up you're talking you know 200 yards behind the boat way up in the air and it's dropping straight down with this uh with this mackerel or with their flying fish there's a big hook on it and you're just skipping it along the surface of the water and all that does is these fish are down below, they're looking up, they can see that profile and they're gonna, they come up and they just explode on these things. Kind of like we're talking about with the wake bait or the frogs or anything else. So when you it's get a 200 pounder, pound fish, yeah. <laughs> exactly, 200 pound top water is pretty awesome. So this uh, thing, it's, you know, instead of $40 for a flying fish, it's $10 for this wingsuit. Mackerel are plentiful. You can jig up as many mackerel as you want. Live or dead, doesn't really matter. But it's, it's this winged profile that looks exactly like a flying fish. Man, it's, it's such a cool little product. That is awesome. So it's a, it's a bait. It's just an extension to a live or dead bait. You clip this winged apparatus on a bait that you catch. So why would you not make the entire bait out of plastic at this point? Uh, you, you can, I'm sure there's lots of swim baits that you can attach it to, but at this point, you know, mackerel, if you go jig them, they're free. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, no they're easy to catch. Them. Okay. Now it's got scent. You actually have the actual shape of a fish. Right. It's it's wiggling, you know, as it's dangling. If, if it's live, it's still skittering. Okay. And it looks it looks like a flying fish just coming out of the water. Um, you know, just putting the wings on this thing. So as that thing's as that thing's kicking around, you know, those wings are getting like a little shimmy to it. Oh, yeah. So as it's as it's as this thing's just bouncing, it just looks like a live fish. Oh you got my the dead gosh. fish. And the, the, the dead, you know, like the, like the yummy flyers and these other brands of these rubber baits, they, they look real and they're super effective, but all you got is something that's static, right? It's just kind of bouncing and they, they don't do a lot. They get bit like heck, man. That's, that's what you need if you're out there, but this thing that's going to give it just, an, just a little bit more, right? Just a, a little bit more. These, these tuna have seen a lot of things and it's just something that's a little bit more natural on the that's... East coast. So we were down in Florida for ICAST. These guys are excited about this thing for like sailfish. They're fishing oh. the kite. They're using it, but they're jigging up. Uh, you know, they can get they can get the uh, flyers a little bit more uh, readily down there. But they're talking about put this thing on a mullet. You know, drop it with a mullet. It's 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 cool. They're excited. That I can't grow a mullet. I don't have enough hair. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the future, so what color? <clears throat> what color are the wings on? Are are they all natural? Or are you going to come out with some different colors, like super, like hologram, like shiny, different? I mean, what's the plan? They've all got some hologram to them right now. I think there's just the one color. I think we were going to do two sizes. There might be just the one size, but you know, so talking about the hologram stuff, it's funny. Uh, someone sent us a picture from the new product showcase and the thing looked ripped. Like I panicked. I was like, holy crap, someone's been handling this and it broke. Let's get in there and look at it. So I walk in there and I look at the thing and it's, it's pristine. It looks just like straight out of the package, but 
it's just the way that the light hits this, the way it, it'll shimmer and give it a, a natural iridescent type of feel to it. Which, you know, coming out of the water, if you're fishing on a cloudy day, it's going to look different than on a sunny day, right. a blue sky day. If it's windy, as it's popping through the water, it's going to get wet, it's going to be dripping. You know, it'll give off a bunch of different looks, just like a fish. You know, you don't necessarily see a bright pink fish out there. Uh, um, on those bright blue sky days or when it's that white clouds, those fish want to see that dark silhouette is what they're looking up at. So it's going to keep it just a real natural look to it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I love it. I love the ingenuity there. <laughs> that's it's pretty uh, cool. It's way cool. I'm excited. We got to we gotta do that. We've been talking about it the last few years. Do some down. product testing. Yeah, exactly. Go do some filming. Get it done. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exciting, man. And, and uh, speaking of, you talked about crawdads a little bit ago, which is one of my favorite things to fish for largemouth and smallmouth. Do you guys have a crawdad bait at all yet? We don't. We yeah, don't. So we did on the, the old brand that we had, which was Savage right, Gear. Right. Uh, you know, we parted ways with those guys about uh, four years ago now. Uh, we did have some craws on there. Super effective baits. I agree. It's something that we, we need to look at on the fish lab side. Um, yeah. yeah I, 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 that needs to be our fun. next. That needs to be our next invention. Not invention, but that needs to be our next product is something in crawdad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly every time you wiggle it the tail kind of kicks closed or something kind of cool and yeah. at fish labs it's cool that's what fish lab is about it's right. it's it's a bunch of anglers who are you know their their lab it's not like they're just sitting at home and they say like this company makes this bait let's just make it a little bit better it's it's just like it's the sketch pad it's it's this could be kind of cool let's let's get on the water and test it like this slam amender i was talking about it took almost three years to produce this thing and get it just right you know, we hit, we hit, we've got our key anglers. We call like our, our lab scientists all around the country. It's their water. They're dialed in. You know, there's this guy we know that fishes up on Pyramid Lake that gets real dialed in up there. Uh, you know, so they know what they want to do. They know how to fish these, these, these fish, these specific type of fish. I'm going up to a uh, Green Bay here in two weeks. We're going to fish with uh, one of the, one of our pros up there who's been helping us with some of these different crankbaits and some of these different deep divers and some of the jigs. So you know, he's, he's focused on walleye. It's, it's not like it's just we'll grab any pro and they want to talk about some bass baits or talk about whatever. And they've got general knowledge and everything. These guys are focused in on whatever their fishery is. Yeah, right. 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 You yeah. know, us, we get around, we fish everywhere. You know, we get the opportunity to, I was down in Texas a couple weeks ago, I'll be in Green Bay in a couple of weeks. I was over here a couple of weeks ago. I was down in the Keys last week down there fishing Dorado. You know, it's, it's a lot of, things but we're going in the fish lab part is the lab is is their actual little bottle of water that they're focused on yeah. right i mean that makes yeah. sense yeah no I did totally and, and anybody out there listening to this or watching this go check out the fish lab um like 10 minute videos that they've been putting out and they're focusing on and we did one at pyramid uh specifically that, talking about you know pyramid lake is my laboratory i mean that's what it is i mean I, and that's exactly what you're talking the point you're making we know those fisheries inside and out. We know what works, what doesn't work, and where the fish are. All the things that that makes that make it work, and then we're able to put our expertise into making a bait that works for those type of fish. And that's, I mean, that's what it's all about, right there. And, and I think too, a, a lot, all of us are nerdy like that too, right? I know, I know you are this the the new guy coming in. You're talking about Mike um we're kind of nerdy when it comes to these baits and these lures i mean i i manufacture lures for pyramid lake because i wanted something different and you know we all think about it in a different way and that's probably why we're all in the fishing industry <laughs> how about you know we're sitting there you know speaking of that filming day we pull over for lunch we're, we're sitting there eating you jump on the bow of the boat and grab that blade bait first cast boom <laughs> big old cutthroat and like a double digit cutthroat comes out on that blade bait get it back into the water second cast just kind of screwing around throw it out there god another one just you know just sometimes you just you can get that stuff so dialed in when you're so focused on that particular fish in an area we didn't even think there was gonna be fish right we pulled over for lunch yeah it was cool yeah and that blade bait was that thing crushed them all year um it, it was hot that time of year for some reason more so than um and i think it was because they were more scattered later on in the year because i i did catch some fish on but when you guys were there a little guppy blade bait. It's cool. It's a, it's a ice fishing jig. I mean, mostly is what it is. And so, yeah. and a blade bait, it's thin, a little guppy got two hooks on it. You can rig it 
in the front or in the in the middle and you drop it and, it and it falls with a twitch you know like almost like back and forth flutter as it goes down and it gets to the bottom quick which is what i like and then as you pull it up it vibrates and it swims up and has a hell of a vibration and my god those fish just destroyed that thing <laughs> One of those it was like one of those lab experiments like hey, you know like let's let's throw a little of this in let's throw a list let's see what happens yeah cast wind wind boom it's <laughs> <laughs> peeling line that was that was pretty cool yeah it was a good experiment. unexpected bite yeah exactly oh that was fun well i'm looking forward man to seeing uh seeing some more stuff coming down you know what else i saw you had i'm sorry to keep this going on too long but um you guys got some weedless spoons i saw some little we did, yeah, there's some weedless weedless spoons out there. Those were designed, you know, in the, the way we worked on them, those were for like a Louisiana thing. These were redfish. These were speckled trout. This was shallow water, big bull redfish. These are, they're, they're weedless, as you mentioned. So it's your, your standard spoon shape, a little bit of a different shape to it. Big beefy hook that's actually attached to the spoon and to the, and to where you're going to actually make your, your line tie. And then that little weedless guard on that thing. So you can cast that thing out there, pull it through the weeds. In Louisiana, you're pulling it over uh, oyster beds. You're pulling it through the reeds. You're 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 pulling it over rocks. So not getting that thing snagged is is key. But then as soon as we started doing this, we started talking to like our Midwest reps. So hey, you need the yellow with the red diamonds. You need the frog pattern. You need the red and white. Your standards. So now it's become like a, a national spoon. Anywhere that you're gonna fish spoons, do drop these things down. They're they're phenomenal. That's exciting. And um. The first time I really used weedless, those weedless spoons, I think they were the Johnston, the Johnson brand weedless spoons. Sure. This is like 20 years ago, maybe longer. Um, my buddies in Canada were fishing them for pike. You know, same things in the weed bed, just like you're talking about. And they would pull these spoons through the weeds. I mean, they were seriously, I never even crossed my mind to run these things. And I don't know why, but they were one of the most deadly baits we had. And I didn't have any of them. My buddy had one or two. We ended up breaking them off or whatever. But I'm excited to fish those. And now that we can go back to Canada here pretty soon, maybe next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's uh, those pike are going to be hungry. They yeah. haven't gotten uh, beat up by us down here. So, uh, Dude, it's been two years. The place that I go, Lake Athabasca, not even the owner's been up there. I mean, it's been two years since – I'm excited. I think there's going to be some gigantic fish to be had, but maybe that's bears are get, bears are going to be hungry. The fish yeah. are going to be hungry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, buddy. Well, I think that's uh, that's probably a good one there. On huh? <laughs> everybody yeah, out there, well. listen. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for joining me and Dave. Um, this is too much fun. We're gonna have to do this again soon, and probably get Mike and and uh, what's the new guy's name again? Bill. Bill Simentel. Yeah. Yep. So we'll have to get Bill. I want to talk to Bill, get his uh, crazy mad scientist brain talking. Hope you have hours. He'll just, he'll just talk and talk about baits. It's crazy. I like it. I like it. Well, all right. I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks everybody for, for hanging with us today. And yeah, thank you, Dave. And we will talk soon.